Hello, my name is Len Cicero, and today we're here to talk about electrical incident reporting, investigation, and management. An electrical incident is defined as any of the following. Any incident where electrical equipment fails in a manner that did or could have reasonably been expected to injure a person, damage equipment, or result in production loss. Any incident where a person is injured by an electrical shock, arc flash, or the associated arc blast. A near miss for any of the above. Incidents that result in injuries requiring medical aid and or property damage or interrupt operation with significant loss are to be reported to the supervisor and investigated. Where practicable, Evidence should be preserved and the incident site should be left untouched, except for activity necessitated by rescue work or to prevent further injury or damage, until the investigation is carried out. In addition, supervisors and or managers conduct their investigation and submit the reports promptly to management and the Occupational Health and Safety Manager. Where required by the authority having jurisdiction for the Canadian Electrical Code Part 1, electrical incidents shall be reported following their requirements. For example, in the province of Ontario, under the Ontario Electrical Safety Code 2016 edition, an owner, contractor or operator of a facility shall report to the Electrical Safety Authority any serious electrical incident of which it is aware within 48 hours after the occurrence, any electrical contact that causes death, any electrical incident that causes critical injury, such as an injury that places life in jeopardy, major loss of blood, loss of limb, produces unconsciousness, fracture or amputation of arm or leg, but not fingers or toes, burns to major part of the body, loss of an eye. Any fire or explosion or any condition suspected of being electrical in origin, which might have caused a fire, explosion, loss of life, critical injury to a person or damage to property. Any electrical contact with electrical equipment operating at over 750 volts, any explosion or fire of electrical equipment operating at over 750 volts. According to CSA Z462, workers exposed to electrical hazards are to be trained in methods of release of victims from contact with exposed energized electrical conductors or circuit parts. This should include emergency isolation procedures and the use of a rescue hot stick if one is available. Workers shall also receive regular training in methods of first aid. For example, cardiopulmonary resuscitation and the use of an automated emergency defibrillator, which should be verified annually. The qualified standby electrical safety watch person should have available a fire extinguisher approved for electrical fires, radio for communication, a flashlight, and the rescue hot stick. If an emergency light is installed, it must be checked to ensure it is functional. Only those workers authorized to do so should undertake electrical emergency response rescue. If a worker is unsure of what to do, they shall wait until an authorized worker or emergency medical services arrives at the scene. Never attempt to rescue a victim of an electrical incident without de-energizing the electrical system first or suitably protecting the person that would attempt to rescue the victim. Methods of release. Approved methods of release must be utilized by the authorized worker completing the rescue. The three methods available are turn off the power by identifying the circuit breaker or disconnect switch and placing it in the off position. 
Rescue the victim using a hot stick if one is available. Use rubber insulating gloves with leather protectors. And ensure that the rescuer's body does not make contact with the victim, only the hands. Other methods, such as using wood, running tackle, or throwing an object at the victim, are not approved for use. They may expose the rescuer or the victim to additional hazards. All electrical shocks, no matter what voltage level, shall be reported. The steps to be followed for conducting electrical incident investigation are as follows. Take control of the site to preserve evidence. Ensure that injured persons are cared for. Ensure that no further injury or damage occurs. Interview witnesses and obtain written statements. Take photographs and collect evidence where permitted. Examine equipment involved. Fill out the company incident investigation form. Analyze all the available information to determine the root causes following an accepted root cause failure analysis process. Determine what corrective actions are required to prevent reoccurrence. Complete the report and keep copies with the relevant managers and worker representatives. Follow up on all corrective actions. Any incident suspected to be of electrical origin where a person or equipment is damaged must be reported to the supervisor. If a worker is injured, it must be reported to the manager an occupational health and safety person. Other important items and considerations. Initiate the 911 medical responders. Victim's name. What was the worker doing? Time of day, AM or PM. Have someone meet emergency responders. Ensure no further equipment damage or personal injury can occur. Emergency response to an electrical incident is very important. Thank you for watching today and stay safe.